Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the three premium ships that you can purchase to buy your way into the closed beta test of World of Warships and that ship is the Soviet Tier 5 destroyer, the Gremiershki. And yes, I am probably mispronouncing that, but... Well, I don't know, it's Russian. <laughs> Interestingly, it took me a while to find some historical information about this ship. Because it's not a Gremiashki class destroyer, it's actually a Project 7 class destroyer named the Gremiashki, which is Russian for Thunderous. Surprisingly, given the ideological differences between Communist Russia and Fascist Italy, this ship was actually the result of a joint Russian-Italian design project. 48 of these ships were ordered. However, in common with other Italian designs of the same period, they suffered from limited seaworthiness and they had some pretty serious structural weaknesses. The earliest ships in this class also suffered from some pretty nasty machinery problems, and by the time all of these faults had been identified, by the time the ships had completed their sea trials in 1936, 30 of them had already been built, at which point construction was halted and the project was cancelled. Now, that didn't mean the ships didn't get used. Of course they did. Russia had built and paid for 30 of these destroyers. But the seaworthiness and structural weakness problems associated with the Project 7 ships would have fatal consequences on the 22nd of November 1942, when one of the Project 7 destroyers, the Destructive, snapped in half during a storm, killing 35 of the crew. Most of the Project 7 destroyers serving in the Black Sea Fleet were sunk during World War II by the Germans. Two of them survived to be scrapped in the 1950s. Most of the Project 7 destroyers that served in the Baltic Fleet, of which the Gremiashki, which we can see here in World of Warships, was one, did survive World War II. The Gremiashki, however, didn't survive Soviet nuclear testing in 1957, which is where this ship met its fate. Four of these Project 7 destroyers do still exist today, although not in Russia. After the Communists came to power in China, they were negotiating with Britain for some second-hand ships. Unfortunately, the Korean War put a hold on those negotiations. China then turned to the USSR and offered to buy four Project 7 destroyers with 17 tonnes of gold. These were the first destroyers to ever serve in the People's Liberation Army Navy. The Chinese later added some HY-2 anti-ship missiles, removed some of the torpedo tubes, and redesignated them the Type 6607 destroyers. Four of them still exist today as museum ships. So, what do you need to know about this ship? Well, first of all, you're going to want to know how much it's going to cost. The ship's available either as a standalone premium ship, or as part of a three-ship package, where you get not just the Gremiashki, but also the Tier 7 Sims-class American destroyer, and the Tier 4 Yubari-class Japanese cruiser. The three-ship package, which on the EU server, also includes 30 days of premium accounts, 4,250 gold, and access to the closed beta test, will cost you £36.30, or if you're paying in euros, $49.99. The single ship package, again on the EU server, includes the ship, one port slot, 2,900 gold, and access to the closed beta test, and will cost you £14.52, or if you're paying in euros, $19.99. However you go about getting your hands on one of these ships, I promise you won't be sorry, because unlike the real thing, the Gremiashki here in World of Warships has a lot of good points, and it doesn't have many bad points. For a start, it's very fast. It accelerates very quickly to its top speed of 38 knots, and it only takes 3.5 seconds to shift the rudder all the way from port to starboard. It's very manoeuvrable. It's also quite stealthy. It can only be detected on the surface from a range of 7 kilometers, and its torpedoes, while they're not the fastest in World of Warships with a top speed of 55 knots, do have an 8 kilometer range, 1 kilometer more than this ship's detection range. The anti aircraft armament is pretty bad. It's only equipped with 12.7 and 7.7 millimeter machine guns, but the main armament isn't bad at all. It's equipped with four 130mm guns, each housed in their own turret, and these guns can fire out to a range of 11.9km, which is very, very good for a destroyer. Unfortunately, one aspect of the gun's performance is also the single biggest downside on this ship, and that's that turret rotation speed. It takes 36 seconds to rotate these turrets 180 degrees. This is definitely no American destroyer. 
And if you do get this ship into a close range dogfight with another American destroyer, for example, you're probably going to lose. You just cannot match the rotation speed of those American destroyers' turrets when you're maneuvering at high speed. Unfortunately, sometimes, you don't really have a choice. As you can see here, I'm desperately trying to capture the uh, B point in the center of the map here in this game that I played on Quickie Baby's livestream. Myself and Quickie Baby are both in our Grammy Ashkies. We're platooned up with Ike, who is in his Congo class battleship. Ike does love his battleships. I'm trying to remain undetected here, unfortunately. I couldn't turn quite tight enough to stay inside the cap circle, but I'm far enough away from that Congo that he's not going to see me while inside this smoke screen I can put a couple of shots into him with my armor piercing because he is a battleship and bang there we go Japanese destroyer just gave his position away by lighting up our aircraft I am firing armor piercing at him I should probably switch to high explosive torpedoes in the water Although I did score some good damage there with the armor piercing. I've reloaded high explosive now. And as long as I'm sailing on the same course, and you can see I've knocked his steering out and did a lot of damage to him. But as long as I'm steering on the same course, I don't really have to turn these turrets around too much and he's gone. It wasn't me who killed him, but I did probably the most damage to him. Now, of course, that kind of close range dogfight with an enemy destroyer has given my position away. And we're taking fire from all directions. Enemy cruisers getting very, very close. Not entirely sure if that's an Omaha or a Phoenix. It could be either. We've capped. Okay, now let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> because you really, really don't want to be using this ship as a close-range dogfighter if you can possibly, possibly help it. This ship definitely performs best fighting at long range. And you only really want to be closing in to within eight kilometers of an enemy target in order to unload your torpedoes on him. I think it's a Phoenix, the tier four cruiser. I don't see a gun turret up front. I've knocked his steering out. Hopefully that means he's going to run into one of those torpedoes. But tier four cruiser, tier five cruiser, it really doesn't make any difference. Cruisers chew destroyers up. I only have 13,100 health in this ship and it doesn't take a lot of hits. To kill a destroyer, I only have 13,100 health in this thing. Speed and maneuverability, dodging shots like that, is what keeps destroyers in play. Now you can see exactly how slow it is to get these turrets turned around. The temptation when you're in this ship is to hold a steady course to give your turrets time to bear on the target, but while that allows you to get more guns firing back at them, it makes you an easy target. Resist the urge. Keep manoeuvring. Oh, he just launched torpedoes. Did you see the splashes in the water? Okay. Good to know. So let's disengage from that guy because there's a far more juicy target over here. An enemy cruiser. Now, I don't know if he hasn't seen me or he's just not paying attention, but he is a massive threat to me. He's a cruiser. He's well within gun range. If he turns his guns on me, I'm, I'm going to have problems. So... Narrow spread selected of my torpedoes. I launch every tube I have. I'm taking fire from the rear, but I'm still dodging it. The torpedoes are on course. He, he, he just hasn't seen them coming. And, well, that was actually pretty easy. <laughs> However, I no longer have the benefit of being inside the smoke screen, and I'm right in the middle of a whole swarm of enemy ships, and they're all shooting at me, and I only have 13,000 health. And it doesn't take a lot to kill a destroyer, so I have to keep moving. Two battleships over there, more ships on the other side, there's a cruiser up ahead. And it's while I'm chasing this guy down that my game almost comes to a premature close. Any second now. I'm still manoeuvring, but it didn't do me any good. I took a direct hit from a battleship and... Well... <laughs> <laughs> That's a life of romance and adventure on the high seas for you when you're driving destroyers in World of Warships. It's all very exciting until you start taking hits. And I just can't afford to get hit anymore now. Uh, and my smoke screen is still on a minute cooldown, so 
Ike to the rescue. There he goes in his Congo class battleship, charging right in there. So now that they've shifted fire to Ike, it's time for me to give him some backup. So I'll launch a spread of torpedoes at the first battleship. Deliberating whether or not I should continue the attack on that cruiser, but he's got problems steaming towards him from the other side of that island, and Ike has deliberately put himself in harm's way in order to try to save me, so I'm going to back Ike up. He sailed right between those two battleships. The Miyogi-class battleship, the one closest to us that we have targeted, has turned in in order to broadside Ike, so all of those torpedoes missed. But my guns are pointing in the right direction, I've got my armor piercing loaded. I'll try and knock this guy's steering out so that I can get him when my torpedoes reload. Come on, try and get some more shots in before he gets into the uh, side of the island and I can no longer fire. He's concentrating on Ike, but his secondary gun batteries can still finish me off. I'm on such low health. My torpedoes are almost reloaded, and here come his secondaries, but my smoke screen is back up and right in the nick of time. Get some torpedoes away. He is in the turn, however, so they may not hit, and his secondary batteries just took my steering out. Instantly repair your steering if you're under fire and you're in a destroyer. Steering or engine hits will get you killed if you're playing a destroyer in World of Warships. Torpedo bombers coming in for Ike, but it's a low strength squadron, only one torpedo in the water. We're trying to shoot them down. There's no sense in turning off my anti-aircraft guns because I'm getting shot at anyway, so I don't need to worry about my position being given away and Ike is unable to dodge the one torpedo. Oh, Ike, you scrub. <laughs> and it very nearly finishes him off. But uh, his battleship repair ability is just about off cooldown. He is gonna be able to keep himself in the game. And while he is taking fire from two battleships and a cruiser, he does at least have a couple of smoke screens nearby that he can escape into to give him time to get the ship repaired and get some of that damage uh, recovered. Meanwhile, the enemy team do control all three of the flags, but I am now inside the sea point, so I am capping the sea point from the enemy team, which is going to give us a bit of a breathing space and give us the time that we need to start sinking some enemy ships. Because in domination mode, you gain points not just by capturing flags, but you gain points by sinking enemy ships, and the enemy team loses points by losing ships. And a battleship is worth a lot of points, so if I can kill this guy, it may be enough to put us ahead. I'd used my third and final smokescreen to be able to launch my torpedoes at this guy from stealth, and since he's more than seven kilometers away, I can actually start shooting at him with my 130 millimeter guns, and he's not going to be able to actually spot me. You can see him, distracted there as he turns the ship momentarily towards me, trying to locate the source of the gunfire. And that distraction has done exactly what I needed it to because it's altered his course, which means that there's one, there's two, he saw them just too late, he's taken on flooding, and that was enough to kill him. And that has put the team ahead on points. But let's not start handing out the medals just yet. They still control two flags, we only control one. So they are accumulating points faster than we are. And if things carry on the way they are, they're still going to win. So we need to either capture one more flag or start sinking more enemy ships while preventing them from sinking any of ours. And of course, that's a lot easier said than done. They've just sunk one of ours, they're now ahead on points again, and they control two flags to our one. So the only way we're going to win this is to start sinking enemy ships, and quick. Luckily, I'm in the Gremiashki, and this kind of long-range gunnery duel is exactly what this destroyer is best at. 11.9 kilometer range on its 130 millimeter guns. And at this kind of range, when you're not furiously maneuvering to avoid fire, you can pilot the ship on a mostly steady course and constantly keep the guns firing. I've managed to crit the steering of that Phoenix class cruiser there, firing high explosive. It's a very, very lightly armored cruiser. Uh, second salvo hit the funnel, did minimal damage, but he's probably used his damage repair ability to fix the steering, which means that that shot which then set his steering out of action again, and that shot, which set him on fire, he can do nothing about. So he's now locked into a full turn, and he's burning. Oh, and he's seen me, and whoa, that was close. <laughs> but not close enough, and he's down. And now there are only two enemy ships left. 
that cruiser who's been engaged by most of our ships and I appear to have found myself an aircraft carrier to play with. Om nom 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 nom. I have high explosive loaded anyway from shooting at the Phoenix after crippling that guy multiple times and it doesn't really matter when you're in a destroyer because the guns load and fire so quickly it's very very easy to switch to the correct ammunition choice. And there we go, he's on fire. Of course he's instantly going to use his damage control ability to put that fire out because you can't launch and recover aircraft in an aircraft carrier if your flight deck's on fire, which means that when this salvo hits him and sets him on fire at the bows there is absolutely nothing he can do about it. He is now completely unable to launch and recover aircraft, which means that as long as I don't sail within the range of his secondary batteries, I am fine. And I'm switching fire to another section of the ship here to try to set him on fire again. And there you go, he's now burning in two different places. So that's lots and lots and lots of lovely damage for me, as he does pretty much the only thing he can do at this point, which is try to shield himself from my gunfire and make me unable to launch torpedoes at him by taking cover behind that island, but it's a Langley class carrier, he can do 16, 17 knots at the most. I've got double the speed of him. He's gonna die, he's just delaying the inevitable. And at this point it's really just a question of who's gonna get their torpedoes off first, me or that squadron of friendly torpedo bombers. And it's gonna be that squadron of friendly torpedo bombers. And I felt cheated! <laughs> no, go away, my kill! What I should have done at this point was switch back to my guns instead of waiting, because there we go, he's sinking, he's sinking, shoot him Jingles, shoot him, shoot him, oh damn it, <laughs> kill denied. But it would be churlish of me in the extreme to be complaining about that result, because that is the best result I've ever had in the Gremiashki, with 237,000 credits earned and just over 4,000 experience. Best game I've played in the Gremiashki, but it's not the best game I've ever seen in the Gremiashki. Oh no, that's coming up next. This is Omri O'Reilly, also obviously driving the Gremiashki, and it's on the same map, but unlike the previous match, it's not a domination map. This is a straightforward team death match, exactly like in World of Tanks. You win by either sinking all of the enemy ships or capturing their base. And because it's not domination, he has a little bit more freedom to decide what he wants to do. If you're in a destroyer, in a domination match in World of Warships, you really do have a responsibility because you're the fastest and stealthiest ships on your team to put the pressure on those cap circles early on in the game. If you don't, well, you're not doing your team any favours, but because this is straightforward team deathmatch, he can pretty much do what he wants. Go cruising around, looking for vulnerable targets and farming easy kills. And that's pretty much exactly what he's going to do in this game. And it does get impressive. <laughs> Trust me, it really does get impressive. It's a very good looking ship though, isn't it? I wonder if that's a heritage of the Italian design. Anyway, here we go. He's platooned up, by the way, platooned up. I've been playing far too much World of Tanks. He's in a division with uh, a teammate in a battleship. That's uh, Pip, Pip de Doodle, I think is his name. But we're not going to see much of him throughout the course of this match. It's pretty much all going to be on Rhea Riley in his destroyer. So first enemy target spotted, far too far away to do anything about it. He's got his high explosive loaded by default initially. But again, he's in a destroyer, the guns reload and fire so quickly. It's the matter of seconds to switch to the ammunition choice that you want to be firing in these things. It's not like you're driving a battleship or anything where it can take 20 seconds or more to change your ammunition choice. It's not going to take long at all for him to find his first victim. Any second now, he's going to spot his first catch of the day. And there it is. That is a Yubari class cruiser. That's the tier 4 premium Japanese cruiser. One of the other ships that you can use to buy your way into the closed beta test with. And the Yubari is a good little ship. But the Yubari strong suit is its anti-aircraft armament, which is very, very good for a tier 4 cruiser. It's not its guns and torpedoes, and unfortunately for the Yabari, Umri O'Reilly here isn't flying an aircraft, so uh, <laughs> this guy is about to run into all kinds of problems. And that's not all he's about to run into, he's just run into the island, which means he is now completely stationary in the water and a sitting duck, which is what makes it all the more hilarious that almost none of these shots from the rest of Umri O'Reilly's team hit him. Umri O'Reilly's hitting him, he's actually penetrated his citadel with high explosive there. <laughs> But that's how shockingly bad 
the armor is on this tiny little Japanese tier 4 light cruiser. That, that's just not the kind of fight it was designed to get into. But there's his first kill. And here come his second clutch of victims. Three cruisers and a battleship. So he selects the, I think it's an Omaha, American tier 5 cruiser in the center as his first victim. And he starts peppering him with long range 130mm high explosive fire. Now, if this guy is paying attention, uh, even if this guy was paying attention, and he isn't because you can see his anti-aircraft guns are about to start up, he's been distracted by enemy aircraft, but even if he was paying attention, he's steaming straight towards Umria Riley's ship, which means you can only really fire at him with his forward gun batteries. Umria Riley selects his torpedo launchers, a nice broad spread, only fires one spread of torpedoes, so he has his second torpedo launcher held in reserve. As you can see there, it's ready to fire, and he fires the torpedoes straight through the narrows. Now, yeah, he was aiming at the Omaha, and maybe he'll hit him, maybe he won't, but what he will do is force this Omaha to turn into the torpedoes to avoid dying, which presents him with a nice fat broadside and he can't maneuver because he's in the narrows, and Omri O'Reilly reloads armor piercing and he's got him right where he wants him. Citadel penetration knocked his engines out, and he's on fire from the high explosive that he fired earlier. This guy's just waiting to die. He doesn't even, and another citadel penetration, he's aiming right at the centre of the ship. He doesn't even need to use his torpedoes here. He's got him bang to rights. Now, he is taking fire from up in front, so we'll just kill this guy and quickly have a look and see what it is. And it's the enemy battleship. Remember that second torpedo launcher that he held in reserve for exactly this opportunity. Now, he's taking fire from the battleship's secondary battery. And there's nothing he can do about that, but he still has his armour piercing loaded, so he starts putting the guns to work. Two of the torpedoes hit, but his first torpedo launcher is now reloaded, and he's just knocked out the engines of that battleship, so he is completely unable to avoid the next three torpedoes, which finish him off in style. So there's his third kill, two cruisers, one battleship, but he's just getting warmed up. There's another enemy battleship, and again it's a tier four, that's the Miyogi class battleship. Um, He's still in range, so hell, why not? Now, he's not going to double back and go after this guy. He's already taken fire. He's already on half health. But as long as he's within range and the guns are pointing in that direction and there's nothing else to shoot at for the moment, well, you may as well. One salvo of high explosive, switches back to armor piercing, is immediately rewarded with some critical damage as he knocks out some of his gun batteries. Yeah, 204. I've seen better. But it's free damage. He is not stopping to engage that battleship, however. He's got his eye on another prize. Now, this ship will be spotted from the air at a range of 3.6 kilometers. And uh, yeah, that battleship's doomed. There's a destroyer closing in on him as well as uh, the other battleship that was shooting at him. And oh look, there's an enemy aircraft carrier. Now, we just spotted two torpedo bomber squadrons heading off towards Maria Riley's fleet. And there's a third torpedo bomber squadron. Now, that Langley class carrier only carries two, at the most, torpedo bombers. So that means, and there's a fourth torpedo bomber squadron, that means the second enemy carrier has to be down here as well. He reloads high explosive, starts shooting, trying to set this guy on fire. Top speed of 38 knots, double the speed, he set him on fire, double the speed of the Langley. The Langley cannot get away, and now he's burning, he can't launch and recover aircraft, so he can't defend himself. So this is going to be pretty easy, but remember, with all of those torpedo bombers circling overhead, hopefully <laughs> they've already fired their torpedoes off, um, but it doesn't pay to take anything for granted. Get the torpedoes ready, and bingo, there it is, there's the other enemy carrier. Now the Langley is an easy kill, and it's not going to take more than three torpedoes to finish this guy off. And they've already spotted him, they know exactly where he is, so there's no sense in turning off your anti-aircraft guns in order to avoid being spotted. And maybe you can shoot some aircraft down, maybe you can get some more points from aircraft kills. And there goes the Langley Bingo. Now the second carrier is going to be a different proposition, because that is an independence, and it's a hell of a lot faster and more manoeuvrable than a Langley. Still, the procedure for dealing with them is largely the same pepper them with long range fire with your high explosive to try to put his flight deck out of commission and he set him on fire which is good in order to allow you to get close enough to launch your torpedoes and you really do have to get close to an independence he has put the fire out that's not good 
but you really do have to get close to an independence in order to guarantee a torpedo kill because the independence can do 34 35 knots and it turns very very quickly indeed it is easily able to dodge torpedoes launched at long range and the closer you get to a ship before you launch the torpedoes at him the less chance you're giving them to outmaneuver the torpedoes of course the problem is that this is the independence and so when you're engaged in tail chase with this guy you can only fire your frontal two guns at him which severely reduces the chance that you're going to set this guy on fire but the independence has just run out of ocean he's now forced to turn otherwise he's going to run the ship into that mountain up ahead which means that Umri O'Reilly can now close the distance on him much faster and he turns and starts setting him up for a torpedo attack unfortunately the independence is able to get one squadron of torpedo bombers airborne but the torpedoes are in the water we've got a minute to go before he can get his tubes reloaded keeps firing just in case the torpedoes miss he sets them on fire yeah, shame he couldn't have done that 30 seconds earlier and there wouldn't be a squadron of torpedo bombers in the air for him to worry about but he's burning from two separate locations now and we know he's already used his damage control ability so there's nothing he can do about that and he's actually turning right into the torpedoes it's almost as if he's sick of living <laughs> and there's his own torpedoes but well Umri O'Reilly's forced to turn away from the location of the independence and wouldn't be able to continue the attack but it, it doesn't really matter he's already sunk him and He's heading in this direction anyway, because that's where the remaining three surviving ships are on the enemy fleet. So, in relatively short order, they nuke one of the cruisers. And there he goes. And then they nuke the battleship. Although he does take one of the cruisers down with him. And the final cruiser on the enemy team of St. Louis, he definitely goes down swinging. What's this? He did manage to kill one of the carriers who was yelling for help in chat, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, this guy was all swiggity swoody. I'm going to get me some carrier booty and watch him dodging these torpedoes like an absolute boss. First spread from ahead, avoids them. Second spread coming in immediately from the port beam, turns, avoids them. Third spread, air launched, coming in from 90 degrees to his current course. He turns to avoid them, but there's so much gunfire going in that he, well... Yeah, didn't really stand much of a chance. As for Omri O'Reilly, well, he's just showing off now, isn't he? <laughs> Look at that. 315,000 credits, 4,500 experience. 725 free experience there as well. It, it, it's difficult to know exactly what from that is just raw game performance and what is as a result of the fact that he also completed all three of his daily missions in that mission. So... He's undoubtedly got some more credits and some more free experience there than just his base score tells you about. But no matter which way you look at it, that was one hell of a game. Oh, and he did over 100,000 damage as well, so, you know, that was nice. <laughs> He's just showing off, isn't he? So, the Gremiashki, or however you pronounce it, Tier 5 Premium Soviet Destroyer in World of Warships. Um, I think it's completely worth the money. And if you want to buy yourself into the closed beta test of World of Warships, uh, you can do a lot worse than this thing. It is a very, very good ship. I'm actually glad the turrets turn as slowly as they do, because if they didn't, this thing would be completely overpowered. It's the one thing that limits the fighting style of this thing and forces you to try to keep your engagements at long range, only closing to closer than 8 kilometers in order to unleash those torpedo ambushes against some kind of unsuspecting prey. But uh, for what it does... Uh, this ship is definitely worth the money, in my opinion, however. Um, your opinion may, of course, differ, but that's why I put these videos up, so you can see what the ships can do and draw your own conclusions. It is, after all, your money. Spend it wisely. As always, folks, take care, and I'll catch you next time.